Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial we're going to paint this gorgeous sunset beach acrylic painting. I'm going to teach you how to use colours to create warm highlights and cool shadows, how to blend, how to paint sunset clouds that look very realistic and are very easy to paint, how to use a palette knife to create really realistic ocean wash and spray in an easy fashion, how to paint sea foam and again use highlights and shadows to create realism so you can paint this really easy but super realistic acrylic landscape painting of a sunset beach so let's get into it So welcome everybody, here are the colours that I use for the tutorial, they are titanium white, cad yellow, cad orange light, cad orange, rose pink, iris purple, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, raw umber and Payne's grey. Now I've got a raw sienna stained canvas, it's an A4 canvas, so it's of a sheet of paper and all I've done, I've made one third as the sky and about two thirds as the ocean and the beach. I've drawn an outline in raw sienna if you'd like to pause the video. We're just going to have a nice sunset, we're going to have a little wave here in the background, we're going to have a big wave crashing onto the beach which I'm going to teach you how to paint. We're going to have some beautiful sea foam and wet sand and then we're just going to have the dark sand at the bottom. So if you'd like to pause the video and copy down the basic outline feel free to do so and we'll get cracking with the tutorial. So just to start, I'm just going to put a little dot here in the middle of the sky for our sun, just with some titanium white. And I'm going to use, oh, I've just realised I've left off a colour. I'm going to use lemon yellow, so I'll put this at the bottom of the screen. My bad, sorry everyone. So lemon yellow is just the colour of a lemon, obviously. And it's just a really, really bright yellow. And then I'm going to use cad yellow, which is on the list. <laughs> Always helps. And a tiny bit of cad orange light to get a really nice sort of golden yellow. And all I'm going to do, I'm using that lemon yellow just here in around the sun. And I'm just getting a bit darker to create a nice glow with the lemon yellow. And it just looks like the sky is getting a little bit darker as it moves from left to right. So just a nice glow around the sun. Now on your ocean, it normally reflects the color of the sky. So all we're going to do to block her in, really nice and easy, we've got that pre-mixed colour, which is just cad yellow and a little bit of cad orange light. And we're going to use that colour, and we're just going to get a little bit darker as we move down by adding a little bit more cad orange light. Don't have as much water on your brush as me, because it will drip all down your palette. But as you can see, it's just a little bit more orange. And all we're doing is we're just going up to the horizon, and then just down here onto this ocean water. So if you imagine that all that beautiful sunlight from the sun is coming down onto the ocean and it's creating a nice warm glow in warm colors. So that's why we're using warm oranges and warm yellows to create that realistic impression. So if we come down to our big wave, we've got this lovely glow and then what we're going to do, if you imagine this glow is sort of in the middle here, we're going to get darker as we move up into the sky and we're going to get darker as we move further away from the sun. So almost like a mirror. But just here in the middle, if you imagine this lovely glow from the sun, it's just going to be shining down the middle, just sort of reflecting. So imagine like a sheet of glass, like a mirror. It's just going to be reflecting down. So we're going to use that warm colour while we've got it, just to paint the middle. And what we're doing, we're creating a thing called an underpainting. And what that does is we're doing all the hard work with our lovely blending and just nice blocking in. And then when we put all the detail on top, these lovely colours underneath will trick the eye and make it look nice and realistic. So we're going to just get a little bit of cad orange. So cad orange is just slightly darker than the cad orange light. And all we're going to do, we're going to put a little bit of cad yellow into it just so it's not as harsh. And we're going to add a tiny bit of raw umber brown. So raw umber brown is really good for taking the vibrancy of colours out. So sometimes with acrylics, the colours are extremely bright. So I'm just adding some white. They're extremely bright, so they look a bit cartoony. 
So by adding a little bit of brown, you can take some of that color out. And by adding a bit of white, we make it a little bit more pastel. And we just create a nice sort of cool orange. And we're just gonna create sort of like rocking back and forth shapes with our brush. And I'm just easing up on the pressure as I touch the other yellow color. And I'm just blending it every so slightly, just so it looks like it's all merging and our transitions from one color to the other is nice and pretty. So we're gonna do the same on the other side. And we're gonna leave that lovely glow in the middle. So if you imagine these corners are getting less sunlight because they're further away from that sun. So that's why they're cooler. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna blend it slightly here on the left-hand side of the ocean. I'm just going up to the horizon line. You might not be able to see at home, it's just very fine. So I'm going right up to where I measured where the horizon was gonna be. And just up to that wave. And again, I'm just leaving the middle to be nice and yellow. I'm just trying to make it look all seamless, that all the blending looks pretty. And while we've got that color, to make it nice and easy, we're just gonna do the exact same in the sky. So think of what I was just saying, think of a mirror. What we've got in the ocean, we wanna sort of just replicate in the sky. So we're using this color just so it looks like as the sky goes up, it's getting less sunlight, it's getting a bit darker. Now, we wanna go from these colors to a nice blue sky. But if we jump, I'm just getting a little bit of cad yellow just to merge it so it's not as harsh as in transition. Yeah, if we jump from yellowy oranges to blues, we're gonna get green and that's gonna be a problem because you don't get a green sky. So we're gonna create sort of a buffer because we don't wanna get a green sky. So we're gonna use this color, which I've got pre-mixed, but I'm gonna show you how to make it. All you do is you get a little bit of purple. Now, if you're purple, my purple is very cool. It's got a bit of blue in it. So if you get a little bit of purple and add a little bit of cobalt blue to your purple, and then just add a little bit of white, or a lot of white, to make it look nice and pastel, and a tiny bit of pink. So add a little bit of blue to your purple, lots and lots and lots of white, and a tiny dot of pink just to warm it up, and you should get this lovely pastel lavender color. And what we're gonna do, we're just gonna use that color. I think it's a little bit too dark, so I'm just gonna wash my brush. It's good to try things on the canvas and see, see if it works. And if it doesn't, there's no bother. We can always paint over it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add a little bit more white and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of cad yellow into it. Just a tiny bit. Still got lots of that purple. But I'm just putting a tiny bit of cad yellow into it just so it's in between this yellowy orange and a cool purple. So let's try that out. That looks better, there we go. So we've got this nice sort of pastel beige color. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna use that by just gently blending it into the orange. We'll go back and forth in a minute, we'll, we'll work on it. But we wanna use that as sort of a buffer before we use the, the blues. So what I'm doing, I'm just going back to the orange and I'm just gently blending the two tones together. Just again, there's not so much of a big jump so you don't notice the color change. But we're using this purpley yellowy white as a buffer. And as I say, you can always go back to the previous color look and just gently come up into that color and just make the transitions look more seamless. Blending is really, really easy once you know how to do it. So always mix the two colors, and then you've got both colors to work on an area. So we're gonna create a light blue, which is cerulean blue and plenty of white. So cerulean blue and plenty of white, and a tiny bit of cobalt blue. So lots of white, a little bit of cerulean blue, more cerulean blue than cobalt blue. And you should get this lovely pastel blue. And that's gonna be the next color. So we've got that buffer zone, and then we've got this lovely pastel blue. So it's got lots of white in it to make it nice and pastel. And that lovely buffer will create 
a little divide so we don't get any green, which is also awesome. And we're just going to go near to the top of the painting. And again, we're just going to blend just so the transition is nice and smooth. Because remember, we're going to put clouds over the top, but by working on all this blending now, when we add all the clouds over the top, it's going to make it look nice and seamless and super realistic. And then we're going to make a darker blue for the very top of the painting. So all we're going to do, we're going to make cerulean blue, but a bit more cobalt blue. So cerulean blue is a bit more turquoise and cobalt blue is a bit darker. And then we're just going to add a tiny bit of purple to the mix and less white. So cerulean blue, a little bit more cobalt blue, some purple and just a little less white. And you should get this lovely darker version. And what we're going to do, we're going to use the darker version to frame our painting. So what we do is we always frame our corners to make them nice and dark. And that gets you to look towards the middle. But also, if you imagine this area of the sky is getting the least amount of sunlight. So that's why it's the darkest blue. It's dark and far away. And as I say about having two um, colours at the same time. By going back to the lighter stage, and now you've got the darker stage, you can just mix the two together. So look, if you get the lighter version, the lighter blue, and just work your way going upwards, you can just blend into that darker blue and try to work on the transitions. And you should have a lovely blended sky. Ta-da! With our lovely dark corners and our gradual transition. Now, if you're like me, and once you've dried your painting, it looks a bit scruffy, you can see some brush marks or anything, you can always look, thicken up your paint. Don't use any water, just get lots of blobs of thick paint. And you can always go over it. So if you ever find that your acrylic paints look a bit scruffy, just take your time, dry your work with a hair dryer, or let it air dry for 10 minutes. And just thicken up your paint don't use as much water and you can always look if there's areas that haven't blend nicely same trick just mix some more of the paint up dry your work and just gradually rework it until you're happy with it so this area just looks a bit boring so i'm just getting a little bit more of that orange and i'm just blending it every so slightly to make it look a bit more realistic and nice so there's nothing you can't fix. Take your time. If you find the tutorial is going a bit too fast for you, just pause it. And then we're going to get some cerulean blue, white, and cobalt blue and purple, that dark color that we mixed up earlier, that we used for the top of the sky. And we're just going to block in a shadow color for our wave. So if you imagine this is all the froth and sea foam as the wave comes onto the beach, but we're going to paint it this nice dark blue so we've got a nice shadow so when we later on put all the detail over and highlights we've got this nice dark color in the background for them to stand out against so we're just blocking that in and then we've got this color called Payne's gray which is black blue and a tiny bit of um, raw umber brown if you haven't got that at home so black, cobalt blue, and a tiny bit of raw umber brown if you haven't got access to Payne's Grey. And all we're gonna do, we're just gonna create the illusion of some detail on it. I'm just using a smaller brush. I'm just splatting, even though it's wet, some little bits of detail just to create some texture, some shadows, and again, Let's put some shadows underneath. So when that wave bellows up onto the beach, it creates a nice shadow underneath it. And this would be getting less sunlight. So let's just get a bit more paint because it's wet, it's not taking. So there we go, it looks a bit better. So we've got this nice shadow. And then we go get some raw umber brown and some cad orange. We're going to mix the two together to make it nice and bright. So it's like a raw sienna sort of color. 
Got to get a little bit more cad orange light just to make it more orange. And a little bit of purple to make it grayer. And we're just going to create some warm sand. So if you imagine this is the sand that is far away from the sun. So it's almost silhouetted because it's so far away. But it's still getting some heat. So we've got a little bit of orange in the mix just to make it look like it's glowing in the sun. And all we're going to do, we're just going to block in the bottom of our painting. So there we go. Now just like the sky above, we're going to get that Payne's grey and we're going to darken up our corners. While it's wet, we're just going to blend it in. So we're just going to create a nice dark outline at the bottom and just darken up our corners. And we're just going to blend, easing up on the pressure. So we're doing our X shapes with our brush again. It's the same as what we did in the sky, but we're just doing it at the bottom. And that just frames the painting. And obviously when we sign it in the bottom corner, we've got a nice dark color so to go against our signature. So we've got this lovely glow. We've got this lovely transition. You've worked on your blending and we've got the underpainting. So well done, everyone. We've blocked our painting in and it's starting to take shape. So now we're going to work on our sun and our clouds and we're going to start building her up and we'll start building up the waves. So all my painting is dry. We're going to get some cad orange light and a little bit of purple. So cad orange light and a bit of purple to make a brown color. Got a little bit of yellow, some more orange. And a tiny bit of white just to make it more pastel. We'll try it out, we'll see if it works. Now I think this is a little bit too dark, but we can always lighten it up in a minute. So lay it down and as I say we can always paint over it there's nothing we can't change so if you imagine around the sun all the clouds are going to be kind of getting bleached because they're getting all that beautiful orange and yellow sunlight so what we're going to do we're going to create some flat clouds sort of against the bottom of the sun and then as we come up into the painting we're going to make them go kind of like diagonally and we're going to make them go towards the corners to create sort of a perspective. So I'm just going out towards the corners, kind of diagonally. But as I move closer to the sun, I'm making them more horizontal, more flat. So let's have some little breakaway ones here. So I'm using just a round headed smaller brush and I've got plenty of paint on my brush. And if I want to make a really dark, harsh cloud, all I do is push hard against the canvas. So just push down. And if I want to make the edges and make it look really wispy, I just ease up on the pressure and hardly touch the canvas. So if I want to make an area really harsh and use that thick orange, I just push harsh against the canvas. And if I want to make the edges nice and soft, I just ease up. So, as I say, at the bottom, we've got the clouds going more flat and more horizontal. And as they go up into the canvas, we're going to make them more diagonal. And it should create a nice perspective to make it look nice and realistic. But as you can see, because we've got that lovely blended underpainting, with the dark blue at the top. Now that we're adding these lovely easy sunset clouds, it's starting to trick your eye and create the realism. Now I paint a lot of these scenes just from my imagination because obviously I do this for a living. So I paint sunsets all the time so I know how to paint clouds. But if you always find it hard, you can always find reference photos and just use these colors, but on reference photos for shapes of clouds. We can take your own photos and as, as I say, use these painting color recipes 
and apply it. So I'm just coming up into the corners. And let's have some just go into the outer edges of the painting. Just so this area in the middle is not so blank. There we go. So I've just added a little bit of painting tape. I've just measured a straight horizon. I've just used chalk. I always use chalk because the great thing about chalk, look, you can just wipe it away and it doesn't leave any horrible marks like a pencil. And especially if you're painting sunsets and you're painting in pastel colours like yellows and oranges, you don't want black on a, like a lead pencil making a horrible um, mark. So we've got these nice flat clouds and then we've got these lovely diagonal clouds. So the orange looks really good at the top, but it's a bit harsh around the middle because obviously the sun would be bleaching it. So we're going to make it a little bit brighter. So I'm getting my lemon yellow that I forgot that I'm just going to put around the sun and create a nice glow. So lemon yellow is incredibly vibrant. So we don't need to mix it with anything. We're just going to use that just color on its own. And we're just going to create sort of a circle. And we're just going to start coming off around it and then we're going to get some cat orange light and some cat yellow to make a really nice golden yellow you can use lemon yellow if you want to but what we want to do we just want to kind of bleach this area And as I say, with acrylics, because sometimes if you use a darker colour for an outline and then you use pastel colours over the top, you can still see it. So sometimes you might have to go over it twice. So my harsh outline was a bit brutal. And I think I used too much raw sienna when I was plotting this painting. I normally use chalk, but I use raw sienna and I think it's just a bit too harsh around here. But you can always thicken up the paint like when we painted the back of the sky and just because it doesn't take the first time So look, it's, you can still see that horrible outline underneath Never fret You can always later on in the video. We'll come back to it. We'll just go over it again later So I'm just gonna add a little bit more orange to the cad yellow. So it's just a little bit darker Because you can always go over it with thicker paint and eventually it will take sometimes when it's wet that's the problem and it just doesn't it doesn't sort of bind to the canvas so sometimes it's worth just drying it with a hairdryer or just giving it 10 minutes just so it binds and then just go over the top but acrylics are fantastic because they're super cheap they are very very easy for beginners so you don't need to spend a fortune so just buying a pack of acrylic paints. If anyone wants any um, brands or anything that I use, you can check them out in the description box underneath the video. So what I'm doing, I'm just going down to the tape with this lovely sort of peachy orange color. I'm just creating some low forming clouds that you get at the horizon. And then I'm gonna get some Cad yellow, and all I'm going to do, oh, I think my brush is a bit dirty. Let's just clean it. Just get some cad yellow, and I'm just going to start putting some gaps in between the clouds, and again, just making them less harsh. So there's a little trick when painting realistic clouds, is to poke holes with the background sky color so I'm using cad yellow because at the bottom the sky is very bright because it's getting the glow from the sun. And you poke holes to create this thing called sky holes to create definitions in your sky and clouds. So at the bottom we're going to use cad yellow. And as we move up we're just going to sort of replicate the colours in the sky. So if we use a little bit of cad yellow here we can just poke some holes. And we can change the shape of our clouds. So if I zoom in for you so you can see a little bit better. So let's get some of the sky colour, which was cerulean blue, tiny bit of cobalt blue and lots of white. And look, we can just poke holes and we can change the shape of the clouds and make them look more realistic. So 
So now we've got these lovely blocked in colors and we know all the paint recipes. We can just recreate the colors anytime and just use that to create detail. So if you don't like the shape of your clouds or you wanna just add some little holes to create realism, it takes two minutes. It's so easy, look. Just using my finger just to soften it up. So just by adding these little gaps, it just creates more definition and layering just makes it look more realistic. It's that simple. And you can do this with any colour sky. So if you had a blue sky and white clouds, you can do the same technique. You just poke in little holes in the clouds. Now I'm going to get some cad orange and a little bit of purple. So cad orange and a little bit of purple. A little bit more purple, why not? We're just going to make a nice sort of dark, tanny sort of colour. Go add a little bit of cobalt blue to make it more grey. But I think that's a bit harsh. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of white. You should get grey now. I'm going to add a little bit more orange just to warm it back up. A tiny bit of pink. And a little bit more purple to make it more grey. There we go. So we've got this purpley grey brown. So what we're trying to do is kind of like a, a grey crimson. We're going to make all the colours in the corners a little bit darker. So all we're going to do, we're just going to go over the clouds. We're literally just painting over the exact same colours. But just on the tips. And these are all the bits of the clouds that aren't getting as much sunlight. So we don't want to make this colour too harsh. Because we want to, again, just like our background sky. We want to make all the transitions look really natural. So look, we don't want to make it too harsh. And acrylics always dry darker, so just be aware of that. So that's why we've got a bit of pink and orange still in it. To make it look nice and warm. And we're literally just blending it into the previous colour. Just easing up on the pressure. Again, just so all the transitions look nice and natural. So all these tips of clouds are just clouds that get more silhouetted, getting less sunlight. So they're just a bit cooler and harsher. So as you can say, that all the stages of building up a sunset are just really easy, but you just you can't miss the stage, otherwise that's what will sort of get rid of the realism. So none of this is hard. And once you learn it, as I say, you can apply it to any painting. So look, just the tips of these corners, just getting a slightly bit, and these bits at the top here, just so it all matches. Here we go. And as I say, sometimes even with me, when you're painting, everything looks good, and then you take a step back and there's something that bothers you. So you can always take your time, rework areas, go at your own speed, it's your painting. So just gradually blending it into that previous color. So it's nice and soft. And let's just add a little bit more orange to the mix, just to make it warmer. A little bit white so it's not as harsh. And then just as that dark colour and that lighter orange that we mixed previously are meeting, we're just going to use this sort of bridge colour. So think of what we did with the sky. We just made a sort of colour that sort of bridged areas together. 
So if you think if it's too dark, it's too harsh. And if it's too light, it's too bright. So we've got this color in between, just sort of link areas together. So think of the three little bears, not too hot, not too cold. In the middle, balanced, just right. Too much yin, too much yang. Stay in the middle, all good. So there we go, so that's looking fantastic. So I'm just blending it areas that I think are just a bit harsh. It's starting to look real, isn't it? It's starting to look really cool. Just soften up this area. Just with that nice highlighted color. Just so it looks like that edge is getting a little bit of sunlight. And then down here, I'm just using my CAD yellow. And I'm just poking some sky holes just in between the clouds here. So I'm just using a little bit of CAD yellow and orange just to go over that cloud. Because you remember that was that horrible outline that I was talking about earlier. And even if this is a tutorial for beginners, I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to these things and it will drive me nuts <laughs> if I don't fix it. I'll be sitting there in this inner voice being going, fix it, fix it, just fix it, Murray. So I have to do it. So some orange and yellow, the kind of color of a peach. And then that looks nice. You can't see the horrible outline as much, but it looks a bit scruffy. So let's go to our lemon yellow and just fix it. So let's just make this glow a little bit nicer and we'll poke some sky holes. So if you imagine that sun is sort of bleaching that area, so we're just gonna color it in a bit. I know it's still wet, so let's get plenty of paint. Makes it so much easier if you have a lot of paint. There we go. And then we can put some sky holes in between these orange clouds now. So just so there's a bit of definition. The sky is always the hardest bit. So look, even up here, you can add some sky holes to make it look nicer. I think I picked up the wrong blue. I think I picked up the darker blue. But as I say, we can dry it and go over it. The principle is still the same. We can put the holes in. And if we have made a mistake, we can just leave it to dry and we can just paint over it. So don't fret. I like to leave all these mistakes in the videos. Because I'm trying to show people 99% of painting is you learn through making mistakes. You learn through experience. So by doing it and realizing you've made a boo-boo, you can always go back and fix it. Don't fret. Don't get stressed. Everyone makes mistakes. That's the only way to get better. Don't be afraid. So look, now it's dry. There's a big dark blue in the middle. So I'll go over that in a minute when it's dry. So I'm just going to get some white and just put back my sun while it's drying. And let's get some harsh lemon yellow. And as I said, let's just poke some sky holes. Now this area is dry. Sometimes when things aren't dry, there's it's just hard to do anything. So just leave it to dry and then just use thick paint over the top and it will take a lot better. So there we go, just using this bright yellow just to poke sky holes. So don't forget everyone, if you're painting along at home, you can always tag me at Mstrip Paintings on Instagram, Facebook and here on YouTube to show off your versions of the tutorials. It's a lovely way to meet people and it's a lovely way to see how wonderful all these people's versions of the tutorials are. So you can tag me at Mship Paintings. So I'm just going over this dark area that I used the wrong blue. As I say, look, you can just paint over it. There's nothing to ever fret. 
There's no mess you can't just fix. So now that's dry, I just use the lighter of the blues and just colour over it and no one would notice. Yeah, and thank you so much to everyone who's supporting the channel and liking and subscribing. The more people who like and subscribe and comment, the more YouTube will show the tutorials and other artists get to see them, which is really, really good because the whole point of the channel is to give back and to help people and get them to use art to get a bit of confidence and learn how to paint. So that's the whole point of the channel. So thank you so much for everyone liking and subscribing and commenting and sharing all the videos it's really really helping so thank you and by doing that you're helping your fellow artists so well done you guys so there we go that is looking awesome i'm liking that sky that is looking cool so all that blending at the start is paying off as i say now when we're putting these little sky holes in and we're doing the colours, we've got this lovely glow, we've got this nice realism. See, hard work pays off. So let's just put some highlights up here with that cad yellow. Let's create a bit of a glow. And then I'm really happy with the sky, but I just want to make the corners a little bit darker with some of that dark purpley colour. I'm just going to add a little bit more purple to it. So just a little bit more of my purple to the mix we made earlier. So it was brown, orange, purple, pink and white. But now with just a little bit more purple. So if you imagine where we've done... The highlights, we've gone over it twice to make that yellow look really bright look around the sun. Well, it's the same principle if you want to make areas darker. So all we're doing is going over it again just to make these areas on the corners look a bit harsher. But we don't want them too harsh. We're not using anything like black or really, really dark shadowy colours because we want to put this, we want to have this uh, sky nice and far off into the distance so we don't want to use really dark colors because they bring things forward so all I'm using is just cooler purples so if you imagine a color wheel around the Sun think of a flame it's going to be yellow and orange really really harsh and bright but the more further you get away from it the more cooler it gets so things like purples and blues are excellent for creating shadows So again, I'm just going in between that purple and that orangey color we mixed up earlier. And I'm just making the transitions just look less harsh. So you don't notice the jump in color. So as I say, a lot of it's repetitive, a lot of it's just going over twice, but it does make a difference. So we've got this fantastic sky, so well done everyone, because that is the hardest part of the tutorial. I've dried my painting before I've put some tape on and we're going to use a nice bit of painting tape to get a lovely straight horizon and all we're going to do that color we mixed up earlier it's dried so we're just going to make it again it was orange pink and purple and white so we're going to get white some cad orange light some purple to make it more gray and a tiny bit of pink to warm it up again so white cad orange light a bit of purple to make it more gray and a little bit of pink to warm it up again and all i'm going to do it's the same color we used in the clouds i'm going to use it right on the tip of the painting tape so i'm going to go right up to the tip and i'm just using a fine liner and i'm just going to create a nice straight line now the reason i'm using this color is because if you imagine this this sun and this ocean is far off into the distance. I don't want to use a harsh color because it's getting bleached by the sunlight. I want to make it still a nice horizon, but I don't want it really, really harsh because it's far off into the distance. So there we go, we've got this nice straight horizon. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna to swap to a flat brush 
And the reason we're going to use a flat brush, if I just get plenty of that colour, is because because it's got a nice flat edge, it makes it so much easier to just create straight lines. So all I'm doing, I'm just using the really sharp flat edge just to create really thin straight lines. So these are all just waves that are getting a bit of the sunlight and they're far off into the distance. You can barely see them. And because this brush has got such a sharp edge, it's really easy to do these fine lines. Don't worry if they're, they're a bit wonky or they're not as straight. Waves aren't. So all we're doing, we're just creating these little divots to create far off little waves, getting a little bit of sunlight. And then all I'm going to do, I'm just going to use that same colour and I'm just going to come in from the edges. I'm just turning the brush sideways. I'm just dragging that darker colour just here on the corners just to make it slightly more darker. Again, it's just really subtle. It's just to make it a little bit darker just on the edges because they're getting less sunlight. So I'm just doing my X shapes again, just blending it. And then we're going to create harsher waves. So we're going to get some orange and more purple this time. So orange and purple to create sort of a brown colour. And we're going to put a little bit of that Payne's Grey in, just a little bit. So orange, purple and Payne's Grey. So there we go. And we're going to create harsher waves. So these are waves that are a bit more stronger. So we're going to create a nice silhouette. Now the reason we're using this colour rather than black is because A, we want to make it more realistic and not as cartoony. But B, it's still going to be getting lots of sunlight. So that's why we're using a warmer colour. Hence the fact it's got orange in the mix. So this is a big wave that's coming towards the shore. And then what we're going to do, we're going to use that flat brush and we're just going to create divots to create the caps of waves coming in towards the shore here. So I'm just using the sharp edge of that brush and I'm just creating some waves just to make it look more 3D. So as I say, I blend in from before, look how much this is starting to look realistic. But it was all that blending, all the thing that people won't appreciate that came before it. Look at that. That's what's creating the realism, that color underneath. So I'm just gonna get some of that mix and I'm just gonna block in the top of this wave. So this wave is crashing into the beach, this big bad boy. So we're just gonna block her in with this dark color. And then we're just going to use that colour just to create a little bit of shadow underneath. Just so it's retracting back. And then we're just going to get some Payne's Grey and just add that to the mix. And all we're going to do, just on the left and on the right, we're just going to make it a little bit darker. And the reason we're going to leave the middle slightly lighter is because that area is underneath the sun. So these areas either side are getting less sunlight and that area in the sun in the middle is getting more. So we're just making the shadow and the wave itself a little bit darker on the left and the right. So another little trick we're going to do, we're just going to get some of the same colour. And we're just going to go over it again just to make it a little bit more harsh. So there we go. So as I say, sometimes you just gotta do it twice. Once it's a little bit drier, just to emphasize something. So we're gonna get a clean brush and we're just gonna add some orange to the mix. And in the middle, and on the sides here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a less harsh wave, a really, really thin, almost completely flat across. And the reason we're using orange in our mix is because these waves are getting lots of sunlight, so they're warmer, they're closer to the sun. So there we go, look at that. And then when we remove our tape, we should have the illusion of all these waves. And if you've got any chalk, you can just wipe it away. 
And then we're going to get some pure orange. And just underneath the sun, we're just going to make it look like that sunlight is bleaching the wave. So I've just got some cad orange. And I'm just blending it. Just using my finger to smudge it so it's not as harsh. So it looks like that sun is bleaching all that lovely wave. Excuse the focus on my camera. My camera's gone a bit mad lately in the tutorials. It keeps focusing a bit crazy. So there we go. So we're doing the same on the big wave. We've got this lovely glow. And then we're just going to get some lemon yellow. And we're going to create shimmer in the ocean. So we're just going to come straight down. And we're going to create a gorgeous shimmer. So we've got this bright lemon yellow coming straight down and onto here onto the wet sand. So all the way down, straight down the middle. And then we're just going to come with thicker paint, just go over it so it's really, really harsh. And this is the reflection of that glowing sun coming down onto the water. We're just going to come out either side from the middle just to create that glow effect. So I'm just coming out either side from the middle. There we go. Smudge that so it's not as harsh. We should have it look like it's glowing. And then now we've got the yellow down. We're just going to get pure titanium white. And we're just going to do the same in the middle. We're just going to create little sort of zigzags, little splats. And we're going to come down from the middle and create the shimmer. So this is all the light beam just sparkling on that beautiful ocean. Now I'm deliberately leaving little gaps and I'm creating these sort of zigzags to make it look like there's texture, there's, there's waves that is moving. So I'm not having them all completely flat kind of just moving them left to right and then just have a little bit on the wet sand so let's just have a little shimmer here we go oh this is looking so cool now this is a super easy way to create realistic crashing waves so you remember that dark blue we made earlier which was cerulean blue cobalt blue purple and less white so it was a little bit darker than the pastel color we made because it had a bit of purple more cobalt blue in it we're going to a little bit of white so it's not as harsh we're going to make a big puddle big dollop of thick paint so cobalt blue cerulean blue purple and some white so you get this lovely sort of nice pastel dark blue and then we're going to get a palette knife and we're going to scrape quite a lot of paint. So we've got this nice chunk of paint. And what we're going to do, look, we're going to go upwards and scrape the paint to create the illusion of spray. So if you want to get really fine dots of spray, just don't have as much paint. Don't have a big dollop, just have a thin dollop. And if you want to have look, big chunks coming off, you get lots of paint. So if you're a little bit nervous, just have a little bit of paint and you just scrape upwards, look, scrape upwards. And what it does is it creates the illusion of spray. And because we've got that nice dark texture underneath in our underpainting, by scraping my palette knife over the top and leaving gaps, so I'm deliberately leaving little gaps, it creates the illusion of texture. It's so easy. So there we go. And because the texture of the canvas is nice and rigid and harsh, this palette knife, it's like scraping your, your butter on your toast or your jam on your toast. It gives that lovely texture. Look at this. And it looks nice and realistic, like some crashing waves. And that's taken literally, what, 30 seconds. And look, by scraping up, and hardly having any paint, it creates that sort of spray and all the little dots, all the little bubbles. Look at that. 
That is awesome. Super easy way to paint ocean crashing waves. So let's get some of that blue. And then let's outline this lovely wet sand to create a nice bit of sea foam. So have a nice thick paint. We can create this nice thick edge. So I always like to paint the edge first and then I can link it and create all bubbles and spray to it. It's much easier to do that if you have the nice thick edge first. So let's start creating some sea foam. So I've got this nice sort of little fine liner and we've got this nice pastel blue. So to the left and the right, we're going to create little zigzags and dots to emphasize the bubbles and the spray. And we're coming out quite diagonally. See, it's, it's almost like diagonally. So we've done the left side. So let's just have a little bit here on the left. And I'm trying to make them all look different, not all be the same, but really it's just some zigzags and splats. That some link to look the outer ridge. So some of them I have link into the outer ridge and some I don't. And let's do the same here. So we're going to have them coming kind of diagonally. Not too harsh an angle, but just slightly diagonal. So let's have some linking up to the edge here. Have some dots for bubbles. Here we go. Right, so to the right and to the left, we've got this nice cooler blue. But in the middle, we're going to just get titanium white. And we're going to start putting some highlights over the top. So just on the very tip. So if you imagine the tip of this water, we'll be getting bleached in the sun because the sun's sort of coming from behind it. So by just using titanium white over the top in the middle, not only does it give an area for the viewer to look down the middle, because we want them to be lost in this scene and look, look at it for ages going, wow. So it gives them a focus point. It just again creates realism because you've got this nice white in the middle and then you've got the cool blue to the left and the right of it. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating texture, I'm leaving little gaps. Just in the middle here, I'm using some of this beautiful titanium bright white. And then just have it come in a little bit either side. Just so these edges are getting a bit of sunlight. There we go. Now again, the white will absorb some of that blue underneath it. So if you have to go over it twice, you have to go over it twice. But now it looks super vibrant. But if it dries a bit flat, you can always go over it again with white. And we're going to do the same here down at the bottom. We're going to use pure titanium white and just highlight this area. So again, look, while I'm laying the paint, it's absorbing the blue underneath. So it looks bright now. But unfortunately, sometimes acrylics dry a bit flat. So if you find that it's not extremely bright, you can always go over it twice. So we're doing the same principle. We're just linking some of the um, white to the outer rim here of the sea foam. And we're just blending it into that light blue either side. So if you imagine these areas in the middle are sparkling in the sunlight, and that's why they're looking very bleached and bright. And then as they go to the left and the right, they're just getting less sun, they're getting cooler. It's the same trick over again, the same trick in the clouds, same trick in the sky, same trick in the ocean. We're using colors to create the realism. So one area looks like it's in the heat. 
in the sun and the other areas look like they're in the cool of the shade. So all I'm doing to the left and to the right, I'm just gently blending it over the top. Don't want to go too far over. But I just want to make, again, the transitions, just like we did with the clouds. Look like you hardly notice where it changes colour. And you'll get better at doing this. So as I say, the more tutorials you do, the more you practice, the more this will come naturally until it's almost like on autopilot. And you can just do it all the time like me. So just take your time. Oh, look how cool this is looking. Wow. So this is looking fab. So let's just put some finishing details just to make her look really, really cool. So all the composition's really good. We've got our spray, we've got our highlights. Everything is looking really, really lovely. And we've got this focus point for everyone to look at. So let's just put the fine detail over the top and get this painting finished, okay? So we're just gonna get some Payne's Gray and a fine liner. And we're just gonna create a nice sharp ridge just to create a 3D effect. So our wave looks like it's real. So by just using a really fine bristle brush, it's so much easier to create fine detail. And the paint's grey, it's not too harsh, it's not like really harsh black. So what it does is it brings that edge close towards the viewer. So it looks like it's just coming towards you. So we're just outlining the edge. Take your time, go nice and slow. Try to have a steady hand. There we go. Look at that. So now it looks a bit more 3D. And while we've got that color, we're just gonna go underneath and just poke some holes underneath the crashing wave to again, make it look 3D. So you imagine these areas are underneath the wave and they're getting no sunlight, so they're almost like jet black, almost in the dark. So again, it just brings, dark colors bring things closer towards you. So that's why we're saving our darkest colors to have this wave looking like it's coming right towards you now. And then what we're going to do, look, we're just going to use this color just to put some divots and some dots in our sand to make it look 3D. So this could be little pebbles or footsteps or seaweed, whatever you want. You could even do a little seashell if you wanted to. You could have a little starfish, something cool that will make your version look unique. So I'm just going to have some dots. We want to keep this corner because I'm going to sign it here on the left. And then I'm just going to put some little gaps just in between some of these bits of the wave. So again, these are just harsh bits of the wave. I aren't getting as much sunlight. So these fine finishing touches. But that is looking really cool. You think it's not even been an hour. So if you can paint something that looks this real in an hour for free here on YouTube, how cool is the world we live in at the moment? You can learn anything if you choose to. So I'm just going over this outline so as I say, if you want to make things look harsher, just go over them twice when they dry. And just the same here, look, I've cleaned my brush because I don't want to have the dark color. I want to have just pure titanium white. And all I'm doing, I'm just putting little dots to emphasize bubbles and spray. I'm just making those highlights look a bit brighter because they've dried a bit flat. And I really want the viewer to look down the middle. So let's 
just have this area really sparkling in the sunlight. And let's just go over our sun again. And just this area, just to make it harsher. It always looks so bright when you lay the paint because the paint's wet. So we want to make that look like that all the time. So as I say, we're just going over the top once or twice. singing along to some music if you see my lips <laughs> I was jamming out so there we go so straight down the middle just these areas especially this hour ridge I just want to make it look like it's sparkling make the blending look a bit neater now you gotta remember you at home you will only know when your painting is finished so if you find that I go too quick pause it go at your own speed if you find the opposite find if I go way too slow go faster depends on your experience but you can always go more and more detailed so these tutorials are what an hour or so long but if you want to go like super detailed it's the same principles you just go more detailed so if you can focus for that long go for it so I'm just using that harsh Payne's grey just to, again just create a harsher outline here on the on the left The same here on the right, just on the tip of the wave, just to give it a bit more definition. And then here, I think in the middle, I'm going to get some cad yellow and orange. So cad yellow and orange. Oh, my brush is a bit dirty, but never mind. We'll just mix it together. <laughs> so yellow and orange to get a peach color. And if you've got some of that Payne's gray on it, don't worry. And then just here in the middle, we're going to leave a little bit of a dark outline. And we're just going to have a little bit of a glow coming through the wave. So if you imagine water is transparent, we're going to have like... The light coming through it just to make it look more 3D. So I'm just using some yellow and orange here. And again, because that wave was quite dark, I might have to do it twice just so it's to take. So I'm just going to get some more orange. So I have the bright lemon yellow just here, just to create a nice sharp outline. So our wave is a little bit wonky, so I'm just going to get some more orange. So I've got the nice yellow at the top, and I've just added more orange to it in the middle. And I'm just spreading it either side, just to create that glow. And I'm just going to add more orange to purple, so it's just getting a bit darker, more like burnt sienna. I'm just going to make a little bit of a shadow so where the wave or the froth is sort of mixing it creates a little bit of shadow on it just outline it I'm just going to try to straighten her a bit I think sometimes as I keep saying to you sometimes when you're 
sitting down and you're painting, you're so close to the painting, you're almost on top of it. So it's best sometimes to sort of do things. Obviously I'm editing this video so you, you don't notice me, but I'm getting up off my chair and I'm taking a few steps backwards just so I can notice things. So here it's a bit wonky, it's got a bit of a divot here so I'm just going to try to neaten her up and make her look a bit straighter. So I'm just using that colour to go from the hots to the darks either side. So having a sort of, it's almost like a burnt sienna colour. So if I want to make it darker on the left and the right, I could just add more purple. And if I want to make it warmer and go towards the middle, I can just add more orange to purple. So there we go, we can just straighten her up a bit. So as I say, purple and orange either side to the left and right. And then by just adding more orange to purple in the middle, you get that sort of burnt sienna colour. So all I'm doing, I'm getting yellow in the middle here. So I'm trying to go from yellow to orange to burnt sienna into more of a purple. So that kind of makes sense. So you're going from hot to cold. So by mixing yellow, orange and a tiny bit of purple, you get this sort of nice orangey burnt sienna colour because the jump from yellow to the darks is just too much, so having this orange in between. So there we go. And if you ever paint an area, look, you can always go over the top to re-put in your detail. So if you find that you change something up, look, I've got rid of a lot of the bubbles because I'm messing about here. You can always put them back in. So don't f feel that just because you change something, you can't just re-go over it and fix it. So I'm just putting some pure white, pure titanium white. Now you can leave your painting how, how it is, but me being me, I really wanted to emphasize that light coming through. So all I did was I got more cad yellow and put that in the middle. I got some yellow and orange that I'm going to put either side of it. So we go from yellow in the middle to yellow and orange either side. And then I used orange and purple on the far left and the far right. So yellow to yellow and orange, and then orange and purple to the far side. Because I really wanted to emphasize the shimmer coming through the wave. You don't have to do this at home, it's just it was bugging the hell out of me. And as I say, I'm a bit pedantic like that. But I really wanted to show people this. Because I'm editing this footage, I can't just jump from one cut to another without you noticing but in real life sometimes in paintings things are going to really bother you and if you don't fix them it will drive you nuts so it's better to fix it now than have it hanging on a on a wall and every time you look at it it just really annoys you so as i say get it how you want before you finish it and i think that looks a lot better now i think that's starting to look more realistic and then so just to finish her off, I'm just going to make our sun look a bit bigger. So I'm just going to create a big dollop to create a nice circle here for our viewers to look at. And I've put her on a nice easel and I've signed her and I think she's finished. So we've got this lovely glow around the sun where you've used warm colours to emphasise a far off um, sunset. You've learned how to paint a sunset, how to paint these realistic sunset clouds where you go from the warm to the cool with shadows. You've learned how to create a shimmer on the ocean, how to use a flat brush to create waves and texture and to use light to make it look realistic. You've learned how to create sea foam, how to create this crashing barreling wave with the light coming through and how to use a palette knife to texturize the sea spray and how to paint sand here at the bottom so all in all a super realistic but also easy acrylic painting of a sunset beach thank you so much for watching at home guys my name is murray make sure to check out all the tutorials we have over a hundred painting tutorials with lots of playlists so you can binge at home and learn and thank you so much don't forget to like and subscribe and happy painting see you soon